Hey there guys, it's Rick Hussey here with Ergon Web and our deep dive series into the BSA line. This is the BSA Ultra SE. Now this is a 12 foot pound gun. We've been working with this for several months now and today we're finally gonna start stretching it out. Stay with us. So let me tell you what we're gonna be doing today. We've been shooting everything at 25 yards, kind of to just really understand how the gun performs, what kind of pellets are gonna do what in it. Today, we're gonna stretch it out. Now, I really wanna go hunting with this. Even though it's a 12 foot pound gun, I think because it's so quiet, because it's so compact, it's really ideal for that backyard pest control situation or just really precision shooting in the backyard. So we've basically been looking at 25 yards, but I know I'm probably gonna shoot beyond 25 yards. Now, the best way for me to really know how this gun is gonna do beyond that is just to get out and do some shooting. That's what we're doing today. So I'm gonna just dial this in as tight as I can at 25 yards. And then we're gonna march it out to 50 yards and we're gonna see kind of with using our mill dots, we're gonna see where the pellet's landing. And then I'm gonna try and use the mill dots to put my shot on target. Now I'm gonna be using the phone scope today. So you're actually gonna see what I see through the scope, which is pretty cool. This is the Hawk Frontier first focal plane. It's got a dynamite reticle. So this should kind of give you guys an idea of how I go hunting when I'm using my mill dots because I'm not tweaking knobs out the field. I'm just not. I use my mill dots. I've done my range sort of calculations. I know what's going to land where at what distance. That's what we're doing today. Let's get to it. Okay, so we are shooting the Hades pellets. These things have proven to be very consistent. Uh, I think they're going to be great for uh, hunting even in a lower foot pound gun because the lead with these is very soft. So I bet you we'd probably still get some expansion even though we're not shooting super fast. Hold on, these flies are driving me nuts today. It is the way it is here in West Texas. So we'll just do the best we can. So first thing I want to show you guys is um, this scope I'm using. It's first focal plane. Now I described that a little bit in the intro, but I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to hit the record on the phone scope here. And I'm just going to stand up and do it. So if I, if I am looking at the target here, let me get you on target. Okay, so you can see the target. Now I'm going to hit record. And I'm going to zoom in and out. You guys are going to see what this does when I do that. Okay, so what's different with this first focal plane is the reticle comes with you. So your mill dot spacing remains consistent. Now, why is that important? Well, when you are in the field and you're hunting, whatever, um, and you're having to change magnification, you've really got enough to deal with already without having to try and remember how, what your mill hold over at what magnification at what range. So this sort of takes at least that thing out of the equation because at 50 yards, if you're three mils, you're three mils, period. Doesn't matter if you're zoomed at eight or 20, it's gonna be consistent. And from a hunting perspective with varying ranges, I really like that. So, so we're gonna use this Frontier Scope today. We're gonna go ahead and get zeroed, like I said, at 25 yards, and then we'll see how we do at 50. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna set it to right about 12 power today. This goes up to 20, but I want you guys to see the picture pretty well. If I zoom in too far, it, uh, I don't know, it may not capture real well on the camera, so we're gonna stay zoomed out a bit. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is just see where we're hitting. We have a little bit of breeze today, not too bad. All right, let's take a shot here. Okay, so we're just a teeny bit low. I'm gonna bring that up. A little bit right, so I'm gonna go left. Let's see here. Then we're just going to put a couple more there, see where we're going here. I think we can come up just a bit. Okay, as the wind picks up, that's when we start getting pushed around a bit. So, um, let's see. 
Well, let's just stop this here. We're pretty close to being zeroed. Um, it all depends on where the wind's going to push us. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take a shot and then use my mill dots to try and keep as many of my shots in the black as I can. We'll do two five shot groups on the top side and then another, we'll do a five shot group on the top side, a five shot group on the bottom side. And again, I'm gonna try and use the mill dots to try and stay in the black or at least as close to it. Oh, dust devil. And there it goes. Fortunately, it didn't take out our cameras. <laughs> That's a plus. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whoo. All right, let's get started here. All right. All right, so I'm gonna start just kind of aiming dead center. Although, I don't know, I think I wanna go just a touch right. So maybe like half a hash right. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha that was it. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, it's calmed down a little bit. I don't know if I'm still gonna be needing to kind of adjust. Let's see. Now, let's gonna go dead center and see what happens here. Okay, that was awesome. We're gonna reset, put the target out at 50 yards and see if we can get, if we get anywhere near that, I'm gonna be super stoked. Be right back. First thing we gotta do here is find out where we're landing. So we'll take a couple shots, see if we're gonna have consistency. I haven't really shot these at 50 yards, so I don't know. I'm gonna 18 3 shoot good. So I'm going to hope that these also do. All right. All right, let's take our first shot here. So I'm thinking, oh, we may, hmm, I'm betting we're going to be not on the target with our first shot. All right, so let me show you how to do this. So I'm looking through the scope now and Two mils is at the bottom of the target. I'm thinking we're going to be between three and four. So I'm, well, maybe I'm wrong, but let's see. Because the 1813s were about four mils at 50. So these are a little lighter. I guess we'll find out. Oh, goodness, yes, we're way low. Uh, let's try again. Yeah, we're going to be right around four. So. I'm gonna bring the scope up and use the hash mark at the four. So that's our four mil mark there and it's pushing a little left. So let's just put the four in the red. There it is. So it's just, it's like three and three quarter mils and about a half mil left. Let's try one more shot. That didn't cock. I go. I'm just going to aim the same spot just to confirm. Oh, that's like three and a half mils. All right, well, let's see what happens. That was three and a half mils dead center. That would be nice. That would be a great, easy place to aim. So. I'm going to stop this and then we're going to shoot our groups. All right, so here we go. We're going to take our shots now. Let's see what I'm doing on air. Oh, yeah, plenty. And I'm going to try and keep 
my shots, gosh, I guess at 50 yards with a 12 foot pound gun, if I can keep them on the orange, I'm gonna be happy. But let's see, let's see if I can get some in the black. Uh, we'll do five shots on each target and try and use our mill dots, which you'll be able to see in the scope. Yes, you will, cool. You'll be able to see those in the scope. Let me go to 10 power, see a little bit better. Yep, okay. All right, I'm gonna make sure you guys can see it. All right, so let's start. So last time we were at three and a half. We're super calm right now, so let's see if we're gonna be in that same spot. Let's see. You know what's gonna be really useful is a magazine with pellets and a cocked rifle. All of that's gonna be really important. All right, so that was the test. And I failed. All right, here we go. Oh, so close. Okay, kind of all over the place. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay, we'll try one more time. It may be that we just need to go with a straight domed pellet for 50 yard accuracy, but we're just gonna give this a shot here. Okay. So those last shots were hitting right at four. Well, I'm gonna try four. Got a little breeze in my face, which could be causing it to drop a little. Now it's stopped. Let me go three. Way to the right. Way right. Okay, we got something going on down there at the target wind wise that I'm not seeing. Okay, so I am going to try and take my last shots and put them in the, at least get them in the orange. So if it's four, no, it's three and a half and one to the right. So let's try it. Yep, it's a little bit all over down there. Um, okay, well, that means that at 50 yards, we're going to have to find a different pellet. Let's wrap this up. All right, guys, well, that is why we do this kind of testing. So we know now that at 25 yards, Hades pellets, with the scope, we have some great options in the mill dot to be able to move things around, shift a little bit depending on wind, but we can put shots in the black, and that's what we wanted to see. There's essentially all five shots, just dead nuts right in the black. That's awesome, I love it when that happens, that's pretty cool. Uh, but now when we go to 50 yards, at least with the Hades pellets, they're probably not gonna be the pellet you wanna try and hunt with at 50 yards, as you can see, sorta of kinda of all over the place. And yeah, we had a little bit of wind, but for whatever reason, they're just, they're not remaining stable at that range. So now we know. So I guess our next video is what pellet will work at 50 yards. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna grab a bunch of pellets and just do some testing. And we're just gonna to stick to 50 yards at this point. We really know what works at 25. We've got that locked down. The gosh, the 1813s and the Hades at 25 yards just will put them all in the same hole. That's awesome. But at 50 yards, we're not sure what's gonna work. So stay with us. That's our next video. Thanks for watching.